Hello friends, in the last video we saw what input variables are and three different ways to define them. We also used the default argument and we saw that a variable defined with a default argument is considered optional and the default value would be used if no value is set in variable files, CLI arguments or environment variables. But there is more to it. You can actually specify descriptions, value types, type constraints, validation rule blocks, and set sensitivity to limit Terraform UI output when the variable is used in configuration. So let's start with the description. The description argument is optional. You can use it to briefly describe each variable's purpose and what kind of value is expected. It is different from a comment as it should be written from the end user's perspective, while comments are for its maintainer and is not shown on the user interface like a Terraform operations execution. To add one, use description keyword followed by a concise coded text as shown for the OS image variable. Now, if you want to restrict the type of values accepted for a variable, the type argument is what you need. Type constraints are optional but strongly recommended as they serve as a helpful reminder and Terraform uses it to generate a clear error message if the wrong type is used. There are simple and complex types. Simple types are string, number, and bool. Strings are usually represented by double-coated characters, numbers by uncoated digits with or without a decimal point. You also have the keyword any that can be used instead of these types to indicate that any type is accepted. On the contrary, if you want to completely dismiss a variable in the case a condition isn't met, you can use the null keyword instead. If a default value exists, it is used. If not and it is mandatory, Terraform raises an error otherwise, nothing happens and Terraform continues its journey. For instance, OS image type should be constrained to string. In addition to these types, you can define and use complex types which are list, set, tuple, map, and object. We'll cover list, sets, and tuples and their constraints in this video. The next one will cover maps, objects, and probably validation rules. So let's start with lists. After specifying the right type, lists, tuples, and sets are represented by a pair of square brackets and values separated by commas. They can be split into multiple lines, always separated by commas. A list can contain elements with different types, and you can also restrict elements to a specific type. If you require a string, then anything inside the brackets will be automatically converted to strings. For instance, if you type a number or boolean, Terraform converts them into strings. It also converts strings to numbers or bools as long as the string contains a valid number or bool value. For example, true converts to true, 12 converts to 12, and vice versa. True to true and 12 to 12. An example is better than the thousand words, so let's define some variables. In variables file, define a new variable named my list. Set type to list of strings with string between parentheses. Then give it a description and fill default with a list of anything. Then plan. This works perfectly. Terraform knows how to convert numbers and bools to string. But if you switch type to number or bool, you'll get a beautiful error message because false does not convert to number nor does 12 to bool. Indeed, a number is required. But if instead of false you had 34.6 between quotes, Terraform knows how to convert it to a number, as the Terraform plain command proves it. For tuples, instead of list, use tuple keyword and the expected types between square brackets. For default, type, order and number of elements is important. Make sure to give in the right ones. If you run the Terraform plain command, this should work. But if you switch order or dismiss a value, you'll get an error message with a clear problem. Value is not compatible. A set is defined in the same way but with the set keyword. It is slightly different from lists in two ways. A set contains one single type of variables and it does not care for repetition nor order. In fact, the first set is the same thing as the second one and the third one. If you fill default with something that is not a number and can be converted to a number, you'll get an error. And instead of numbers, you can obviously opt for strings or bools. Okay, now that we've seen how to define lists, tuples and sets, we get to use them. First define a tuple for the machine type, zone and allow stopping for update. We got two strings and a bool. 
Let's use a tuple to model this in a new variable named VM params. The type should be a tuple with string in the first and second position and bool in the last one. Add in a brief description and default values set to F1 micro for machine type, US central one for the zone and true for allow stopping for update. Now on the main file, replace these values with VM params, pretty simple, always with the var keyword and the variable name add squared brackets with the right index. Same thing for zone at index one and allow stopping for update at index zero. If you run the plan command, it should work. Following the same logic, you can define and use lists and sets. Notice that in this specific example, an object or map would have been more appropriate as we could have used attribute names instead of obscure indices. Okay, that's it for this one. We saw what kind of variables Terraform supports and how to add descriptions and constraints. Specifically, we learned how to work with lists, tuples, and sets, and the difference between lists and sets. In the next one, we'll cover maps and objects and maybe even validation rules and see how we can rewrite VMParams variable with the appropriate type. Thank you for watching and see you then.